Thanks for tuning in, guys. We are here with actress today, Judy Greer. Funny lady, has had an amazing 25-year-plus career in Hollywood. But today, we are talking about something super timely. She is an ambassador for the International Medical Corp. And they have a gala that is raising money both for the current uh, Israeli-Gaza crisis and for global disaster relief worldwide. All right, well, Judy, thank you for joining us here today. We're, we're super excited to have you. So tonight is a special night. It is yes. the gala for the International Medical Corp. And you have been an ambassador since 2017. Tell me, you know, what, what motivated you to get involved with them? Um, well, I was, so it was 2017, right after Hurricane Maria. And I was shooting a movie in Puerto Rico. Um, we had to shut down production, obviously, uh, the hurricane. We went back about three weeks after the hurricane and there was an actress in the movie named Tara Summers. And she was, uh, she was familiar with the International Medical Corps. And she said, oh, I have some friends in town with this organization. They're helping um, with uh, get supplies in. It was really hard to get anything in mm -hmm. to the islands at that time. Yeah. And um, like almost impossible to get people out and to get things out of the It was just really incredible what um, they were up against in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. And actually, you know, I watch these things on the news all the time. So being there was like a completely different situation. To experience it yourself. Yeah. yeah. And so there was a lot of questions. So uh, I know you're going to edit this. There was a lot of questions about whether or not we should be shooting a movie during a time where there's mm -hmm. been such a, such a big tragedy. And just for, for the audience <laughs> watching, in case you don't know, International Medical Corps helps people after you know, war-torn countries, natural disasters. After and during, yep. yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. so so the International Medical Corps is an organization that um, I I secretly call them ninjas. They, uh, they're, they're under the radar. And this was kind of what was so impressive to me about the organization was how under the radar they are. Like, they don't have, like, giant signage anywhere. And yeah. they actually find for their staff that it's much safer if they don't have signage and they're not making a big deal of being there because yeah. they're really inside of it. They're not on the outside. They're, like, inside of whatever the situation is, whether it's uh, war, whether it's a natural disaster, um, whether it's famine, um, whatever's going on, they're like really in it. And so it would be really unsafe for us all to know that they were there. Yep. And that was something that I thought was really um, impressive because I... I'm in Hollywood and a lot of us Hollywood folk, we like to talk a lot about all the good things that we do. So meeting people who have no ego and no desire for recognition um, and just want to help and want to save lives and want to um, bring some, some order back to uh, places that are, that are really hurting was really impressive to me. Yeah. So, Back to me. <laughs> and they're, and they're, da they're, they're doing the work. You know, after a hurricane, like I know in yeah. Puerto Rico had no power. They had no electricity for there was no the gas. weeks on there end. Was there, were, there was nothing. So they're working there, you know, with all the cell towers are down. So, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a juxtaposition. Like you said, you're there shooting a, a movie, which is a great exactly. experience. And then to see this thing happening and, and so you meet them and want to know how you can help. Yeah, we, uh, we met up. So basically we did not ever have a day off because we were either shooting our movie or mm -hmm. we were helping on the island, um, volunteering in some, some way. Um, I met originally, um, the doctor that I toured around with, um, we were going to different clinics that were on the island. And what was interesting to me that I never even thought about was there were so many people who didn't, um, well, I sound like an asshole when I say this, but I didn't really understand, uh, that, the lack of communication. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm in Los Angeles, California. Like if a cell tower goes down, you can still call people. You can still reach out to people like here. And it's a slight annoyance, right? You drop yeah. a call and you're annoyed, but this is like life or death situations, yeah, getting, like, getting the things that they need. Yeah. And so these people, we, you know, we were able to figure out like who is, uh, 
in the most need, we were able to go to these clinics and these communities and the clinics, the people who worked at the clinics, you know, they know their community. So they mm -hmm. were able to really pinpoint like specific needs of specific people. Yeah. Like they were like this man, his wheelchair is gone and he can't move. So we were like, okay, we have to get a wheelchair like right away to this guy because yep. he can't leave his house. He's mm -hmm. totally unable to, um, to get help, to get food, to get medical care. So it was great that these small communities had these advocates. And so um, then the doctors come in and they help where they can and they help mostly in this situation. What I witnessed was getting supplies to these people because that's what they were really lacking, was getting the information of how they could get help and then getting yep. the supplies to the people. So it was such an incredible um, experience. And I, uh, you know, if, if you're into God or anything like that, I would say that me doing that movie was was because I was supposed to get introduced to the International and, Medical Court. And um, and then like, you became an ambassador for them. <laughs> yeah. You know, which I love because, you know, it really touched you and you're like, I have to spread the word. And, you know, I want to ask you, like, you kind of hit on it a little bit, but what's the, when there is a tragedy, any kind of tragedy, what are the immediate things? I mean, there are things that people need immediately. Yeah. And then there were things like when you know, the media and the buzz and the the initial prayers and thoughts runs out that the people, and yeah, are yeah, over. people still are needing. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that maybe? Um, I think that uh, when uh, a crisis happens, um, yes, I can talk about that. I think what I've noticed is how the, the media it, walks away once the crisis mm -hmm. seems to have settled down. The news cycle's done. The they're news cycle's yeah. done. Another terrible thing has happened that we need to deal with or someone's getting divorced, like one of the two things. So so, so the me when the media is not focused on this critical time, then people forget. And that's when the med International Medical Corps like, actually needs you the most because that's mm -hmm. when they're in there. And the most important thing I noticed with... Um, Hurricane Maria actually being there physically was the water and people need water. And so mm -hmm. when these natural disasters happen, um, they need water and they need food and the water gets dirty. Um, there's the drinking water is tainted and they yep. need ways to clean it and they need ways water to, to wash cook, themselves. Or yes. wash themselves. And, yep. um, having, you know, a way to get rid of waste is also a real issue because that can cause a lot of bacteria and infection and new health crises yep. that like have nothing to do with, with the, the natural disaster that yeah. just happened. Yeah. But all of a sudden you're like, crap, um, these people have to crap. Anyway, so, uh, so that was something that I learned. And, and I also was, okay, so it's called International Medical Corps. And so they work primarily with doctors and nurses, mm -hmm. but they also work with uh, engineers, I learned. And I learned okay. that they have a crew of engineers that comes in and they help with all these things. They help with like figuring out like a dam in a community or how to get the water supply to the community, how to rebuild. Like wells um, and infrastructure. Yes, and infrastructure yeah. is mm -hmm. so important. And if you've been to New Orleans um, and mm -hmm. then do a bachelorette party drinking. Like, <laughs> um, but infrastructure is so crucial in these times, like after the triage is over with, yeah. like then you really need to get roads fixed so that people can deliver supplies. Yeah, the so rebuilding, the, yes. the cleaning up, the amount of damage, like you said, you see after Hurricane Katrina. Or yeah, where even, do you, you know, of this? Even though we feel removed here in LA a lot of the time, you know, you see it after like the really big fires or really big earthquakes. Quick. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously the kind of elephant in the room to address is we're in the middle of, of a Middle East crisis okay. right now. So, um, I, do, I, I know, <laughs> no, I don't want to make you cry, but it's hard not to cry. There's been, you know, the last two weeks of the news with everything going on, uh, in, in Gaza between Israel and Palestine and everyone over there, our hearts go out to everybody, but it's a perfect example of a time where, People don't know what to do. They want to help. They're they not sure, hey, where do we help? Where do we give donations? Where do we give money? Where? How do we know it's getting to the right people? And it is a perfect example. And I'm, I'm a part of the media. But, you know, the media is important to bring information. But there's also a lot of misinformation and a lot of confusion yeah. as what's going on out there. You know, as can happen when things are happening in real time and people are trying to, to get as much information out. Um, but so obviously right now there's a gala tonight. They're going to be raising funds for this cause, for all the causes that they yes. benefit. 
Um, but, you know, I'd love to hear, you know, if, you, if you're comfortable speaking on a little bit of what, you know, what it means to just support an organization like this in a time like this. We have this crisis going on. We have the Ukraine crisis going on and kind of the same thing. You know, the, the buzz is off the Ukraine crisis for a minute because we're on this. <laughs> I mean, and that's a terrible thing to think because these I both know. of these places still need dire help. And there's other places that aren't even really getting the coverage they they need in the news right now that have genocides happening, that have mass. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a weight, yeah. you know, you wake up and it's a weight on you and it's hard to go about your daily, you know, you're a funny lady and it's hard to go about your, your day. But so how can people support tonight's gala? How can they support the International Medical Corps? And what, you know, what kind of advice do you have at this time? Well, uh, one of the reasons that I I loved the International Medical Corps was because I was actually there with them. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, like you ha- you want to you want to give money, you want to help in some way possible. And there's you go on the internet, and there is just like an endless list yeah. of places to send your money, and it can be so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And um, and so for me, uh, just. Because like I got to meet them, I got to travel with them, I got to see what they do yeah. and how impactful they are, and I got to see how the money is spent. Um, that's what was so moving to me, and so that's why I tell my friends, um, you know, we're not really allowed to talk about where our people are because they can get harmed. So, um, so you know, we have doctors in Gaza right now. Mm-hmm. We have people working in Gaza and that can be very dangerous for people to know that, mm-hmm. you know, people they in, know the locations or you, you yeah. mean, even, even the press over there have you know, there's been deaths, they're wearing right things to say, Hey, I'm I'm here for press, I'm here for medical, I'm I'm here to help and it, it you know, it's, it's just really, a dangerous thing. But our people, like the people who work for this organization are putting their lives at risk. They're not in offices mm-hmm. off site in Israel. They are in the middle of this. Yeah. The people that we have in the Ukraine are teaching soldiers, they're teaching nurses, they're teaching doctors so that they can eventually walk away. And we have trained these people how to take care of each other and how to help in these situations. And I think that was what was so interesting to me is that this is an organization that doesn't just like go in and fix it and get out. Like we are invested in these communities and we're invested in these crises for as long as they go on. Like we're not leaving. We're not going to leave until people are healthy and safe and they can eat and drink and go to the bathroom. And so that to me, um, was why I chose, uh, before I became an ambassador, ambassador, which is why I chose to give money to the International Medical Corps and, um, and, and why I thought this was the organization for me. And, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can look up online about where the money gets spent and you will be, you'll be happy when you look us up because it goes um, (laughs) goes to the right places. But so tonight, let's, let's, I appreciate you talking about this. I know it's a, it's a tough topic for everyone and it's hard to watch the videos online and of the families and, the, and just the level of destruction and what it's going to take to fix there. Yeah. So, um, but you know, on a positive, the galas tonight couldn't be at a better time. It's needed. What, you know, are there goals for tonight in terms of raising funds? What, what are we willing to do out there to get people to get excited and, and, not, and excited is not the right word, but get motivated to, to really do the right thing here and, and, and help. Yeah, with this I'm glad I'm not at a gala to raise money for animals right now because it would be really hard. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the goal for tonight is the goal was always to raise as much money as possible. But I think that like now, um, we're seeing that, uh, that it's really needed in one one specific place, and what's you know great about a lot of organizations, but ours certainly is when you go on the internet, you can pick, you go to the international internationalmedicalcorps.org, and you can sort of choose your you know like I want to give money, but I want to give it to like the Ukraine or I want to give it to anyway. I think that like uh, it's always nice when you can choose where your money goes, but tonight I think that we're all really focused on getting as much um, help. as much help as we can. I understand that and. Tonight you're honoring a couple people. I don't know if you want to talk about that for the for the gala. Yeah, Doctor Chad yeah. Wright. Mm-hmm. And how happy was I that I could pronounce his name and I didn't have to get help with that. Um, no, I think it's a you know getting honored at something like this. Um, well, it's really special because I don't think uh, what I always like 
to watch the families of the honorees because mm-hmm. I think like what always moves me and like oh, I'm such a sec but like when I watch like people, I need a tissue for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when I like no, you're I love watching like these people who get honored like their kids, sometimes their grandkids, their families are so there proud. at the table and they're so proud. And so often we don't see what our parents do or our families do or our friends do. Mm-hmm. We don't get to watch them in action. You know, we have this idea and certainly it's discussed and we know like oh dad or mom is gone or but like Seeing it is really different mm-hmm. and getting an, an, an honor from an organization that is asking people on a daily basis to put their lives at risk mm-hmm. is a huge sacrifice when you look at who is sitting at their table and what they're risking. They're risking yep. their lives. They're risking time this, with their own families, yes, time with their own. Yeah. This group of people. And, and they're also like such an incredible example to all of us in that room. And um, it's just nice when people use their superpowers for good and not evil. And I think that's what's really great about nights like tonight, not just about raising money, but about recognizing the talent that this organization has assembled. It's really cool. And um, I wish, you know, we had time to talk about all 8,000 of the members that are doing the work. <laughs> no, but that's an amazing number and it's an amazing cause. And I hope people watching this video go on and, and donate and maybe they can volunteer or learn to get to get involved. Yeah, there's um, definitely something to do. If you don't have the money for it right now, there's another way to get involved. So, And then, you know, obviously I, I want to talk about your career. And I think it, it relates to this too, because at a time like this, people are afraid. People, you know, people yeah. wonder if we're going into... World, World War Three, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you don't know what's going to happen, and so um, traditionally throughout history, film, TV is something that gives people that escape, that relief, but also explains these really serious situations uh, to people. So, you know, you've had a fantastic career. You, I mean, not quite. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's well deserved. But you know, you've got twenty five years in the industry, which is almost unheard of in general. You have played so many different character roles, which I love, like ever, you know, I, I know we won't, because there's an ongoing strike, we won't <laughs> yeah. name any projects and specific roles, but we all know what we're talking about here. So, um, yeah. yeah, tell, you know, if, if you can just tell me like what it's meant to you to have such a long career and be able to tell these kind of stories. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear. Well, it's, uh, first of all, I'm incredibly fortunate, obviously, to have been working so long and, um, and in this industry, which, I don't know. Everyone warned me about it, but, uh, it's been, it's, it's hard. It's tough to be an actor. It's tough to do any of the arts in general, but Mm -hmm. Hollywood can be a specifically weird place. I think Mm -hmm. it's a place that's hard to, um, it's, there's not a lot of distractions here Mm -hmm. from the film industry. And I find that like when I travel and I work for periods of time in other places like I'm like oh there's more to life than <laughs> the Hollywood when I go scene. home to the east coast I people are like they don't care about what that that, that oh. scene and it's so it is a refreshing oh my god in Ohio they really <laughs> don't care trust me <laughs> yeah and it's but but it's been uh I'm so grateful for all the work I'm grateful for all the relationships I've mm-hmm. made and it's interesting, you know, we're talking about the industry, obviously, a lot right now and watching it evolve and what, how it's evolving and how some people would like to see it evolve. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an interesting time. Um, it's hard to have perspective when yeah. you're in the si- inside of it. Um, but I think, you know, someone could tell us, oh, this happened again. Yep. This happened before and this year. And, and this happened already back like 2007 yeah. or 2008 when the first strike and we won't get too into the nitty gritty of the strikes. That's not what we're here to talk about. But I do think, you know, people in LA are going through a, a lot of change with, with the industry right now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on in the world. And so like funny stories are still so important. Oh that laughter, yeah. that quirkiness yeah. and, and that levity, even in really tough times is like, you need that or, or you, you know, you would, Right. You would implode. AI would take over. You know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was telling my husband, I was like so upset about the bombing in Israel. And he was like, honey, AI is going to take us all down. It's not going to be a war. Right. <laughs> Obviously, he was joking, but not really. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a weird time. But yeah. I think like one thing that one part of this evolution of, I don't know, society, but Hollywood mm-hmm. is like that we 
have this thing also called social media, which mm-hmm. probably also will kill us all. But like, <laughs> but it's such an interesting. But but like way. also shares like it's how we're say, seeing everything that's happening overseas. A lot it's of it becomes such an important platform, mm-hmm. especially for uh, disasters like this, and um, and for people who have the platform and can talk about what we can do to help and Mm -hmm. how we can get the word out. And I don't know how without social media, we would be able to communicate some of the things that we're seeing that are happening and to have it really make an impact. And for as upsetting and scary and hard as it is sometimes to go into those apps and look at what's happening, you know, it's really important and it's a good thing. And you see a lot of people coming out right now in Hollywood and and supporting, you know, rate fundraising efforts, you know, for, for the tragedy that just happened in Hawaii, for the tragedy that's happening in Israel now. And, you know, it's we get caught up in the news cycle and a new thing happens, but the, these are ongoing. I mean, yeah. the, what the Hawaii cleanup is going to be happening for weeks and months to come. What's happening in the Middle East is going to be affected for the next few years. So I think it's a you know, there are people out there who say, oh, Hollywood should stick to Hollywood. But I think I would agree with you that, you know, this is what Hollywood does. They use their platform to bring attention to things that are happening in the world well, yeah, when it's making, happening, we've you know? making movies and TV shows about these tragedies For, since the beginning of yep. movies and TV shows. Yep. So this is just like a little bit of an extension of that. But this yep. is how we... Um, this is how we learn about these stories and mm-hmm. see like different points of view about them. Um, there's so many, I, God, there was so many great movies that came out around the, that the recession, that 2008 mm-hmm. like, real estate crash that I just did not understand what was going on. And I was watching this movie and I was like, Oh, You're like, oh, that's what happened. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. what happened. And that's how it affected those people. And that's yep. how people like that got involved in this. And I was like, wow, that's really yeah. cool. And I, I think about those stories, you know. Yeah, and well, what's happening now, they'll be the stories of the future and they'll look back and tell what's happening. How know about what World War II was like and yep. what happened and like, you know, all these, like these historical yep. moments. So I think like, you can make fun of us in Hollywood, but. <laughs> <laughs> but storytelling is the most powerful medium. It always ha- has been. Well, I have just a couple light questions. I know we can't get into the exact things, but, you know, I remember seeing your breakout when you could, in a film where you could hear men's thoughts. And I'm still praying for that to become a reality. Let's just be honest. But I, I followed your career. It's Thank been you. amazing. Is there Are there any roles that, like, you would just love to play that you haven't gotten to play yet or any types of stories that you, what you know, whether it's comedy or drama or horror, you've been in every genre, which is another thing I admire. But is yeah. there anything you're like, man, I really want to want to bring this to the... Well, there's a lot of stories I would like to tell um, still, for sure. I have found, as my career has continued, that I'm more interested in, like, the people I'm working Mm -hmm. with than necessarily the specifics of a project. And I find that I'm looking for inspiration from other artists. And I've had such an incredible career so um you know once my bills are paid and I'm eating a meal every day uh then the choices really are about like who am I going to spend these days with at work like if you're going to ask me to leave my family and my home for three months yeah. like who am I sitting in these, these 20 hotel? hour like, days yeah, yeah exactly, so exactly. I'm like you better be cool you better be worth it you better like I better be able to sell you to my husband <laughs> he needs to approve yeah um that is interesting to me and and then just like dumb I've never been in an action movie oh yeah so. I could see you kicking butt and making people laugh I, could I would see that. love to be in a comedic action film that would be really fun um and uh yes well we'll look out for that for sure <laughs> and uh Anyone watching, you heard it here. That's what she wants to do next. And also, yeah. but honestly, you you are a, a superhero by helping, you oh, know, the International Medical Corps. Not to be cheesy, but it really is an amazing, I'll take it. amazing thing. I'll take we wish you guys power. a ton of luck at the gala, but not okay. just the gala. Like, log on, check out their work, donate, yes, do what you can, volunteer. And, uh, yeah, thank you for, for sitting down with us today. Oh, my God. It's, like, probably my favorite thing to talk about. So thanks for having me. Thank you.